guys, how are you today? All right, so we are here on my really messy desk <laughs> with my large delusions journal and my binder of the stencils of my own design. Now, if you all didn't know, for those of you, of you who didn't know, I have my own Etsy shop in which of course I sell art and reprints of my art. There's digital downloads that you can get and all sorts of things. I also have my own line of rubber stamps and stencils. And I also am, as a side note, um, in the process of accepting applications for the 2018 design team of my products. Um, we have lots of new and exciting things coming up for 2018, including um, some work with other artists and companies. So it's going to be really exciting. And if you're interested in applying, please do so. The link for the design team application will be in the des video description below, along with all my social media links, my Etsy store link my tip jar link, my happy mail address, all that stuff. So check it out. You don't have to have a YouTube channel. I know it says in the application that you do, but you do not, um, as long as you do other social media. And if you're brand new to YouTube or you're thinking about doing a YouTube channel, well, we can help you as part of being on the team. We can help you get that done. Um, all right. So anyway, I have a number of current stencils in my design line. These are them. There's a few in the back here that are prototypes of new designs that aren't out yet. But I am looking for a particular two. So I have two. Um, they're called Bare Bones Faces. Obviously I've used that one because I'm not great about cleaning my stencils and they're usually covered with schmutz. <laughs> and so here we go. So I thought I would do a tutorial. These are called uh, the Bare Bones Face and Bare Bones Profile. They're just basic face outlines. There we go, you can see that one a little better. Um, really just very, very basic, absolutely no details. To, they were developed in order to aid those of you who are unfamiliar with adding faces or drawing faces as part of your journaling work um, to help you accomplish that without, you know, in a little bit of a shortcut. So anyway, I also have stencils that are full faces um, if you would prefer to use those, but I thought I'd do a tutorial on how to use these. Um, we're going to do the full faced face first because it's easier. You can of course do these in paint um, or pen or pencil. I'm going to actually do pen and I think I'm going to just use my favorite Pilot Varsity disposable fountain pen. I happen to have these two pages in my Large Delusions journal that are blank, which is perfect. So I'm going to center the stencil in the page. I'm just going to eyeball it. And then I'm going to hold it down and I'm going to trace around like one side of all the openings. Like on the eye, I'm doing the upper edge. You could do the lower edge. I tend to like girls with wide faces, big eyes, full lips, and all my stencils of faces reflect that. So when I'm done, I have something that looks like this. Yeah? All right. So we're going to set that aside. Um, now, all right. So to fill in the rest of the face, the first thing we're going to do is kind of map out where our forehead should be. So I'm going to line my, whatever happens to be on your desk up, I have a Sharpie here. So I'm going to put the bottom of it at the base of the nose here, and I'm going to just put my finger here about to where the top of the eye, eyes are. And then I'm going to line up the base of the Sharpie with the tear ducts here, and I'm going to put a little mark. Then I'm going to take my same Sharpie, and I'm going to put it underneath this base of the nose and put my finger here about where the bottom lip is and then bring it up and line up the base of the Sharpie with that lower lip and put a dot. Okay, so this is about where the chin should be. This is about where the bottom of the hairline should be. The top of the hairline should be somewhere up here. So when you're doing this, you want to remember her face should be some sort of egg or oval shape. You don't want to make the top of her head so low she looks like she's got a flat head, right? And you could, when you do this measurement, put, put measure it the same way, right? Put it back up here, 
and line that finger point up with the top of the eyes and put another mark up here. So the top of the head should be up there somewhere and that, you know, if you're going to put bangs or something more, they should be around there. The nice thing about this pen is it's water soluble. So after I'm done writing, writing, I can add a little water and make it look really kind of artistic a little bit, right? All right, so now let's start to put some features in. And the first thing I'm going to do is put the iris, which is the colored part of the eye in, which should be something like that. It won't be a circle because um, if you look at yourself in the mirror, the upper part of the iris is usually covered by the upper eyelid. And then I'm going to put in the pupil. And your eye is round. There's a tear duct there. And there. And, you know, I wouldn't worry too much about trying to get them exact. If you look in the mirror, you're not exact. You're not, you know, symmetrical. And um, you just don't want the bottom of this circle too far past where these two lines, where the invisible part of this line is down here. Right, I'm going to add some ink here. And before we get too far, I'm going to get a little flat brush. And I've got some water right here off, just slightly off camera. And this paper isn't really made for this. This is a, the Large Delusions Journal, and um, it doesn't really, it's not great about taking water media, but that's okay. All right, so I'm just going to let that ink bleed a little bit in the parts of the eye that would be darker, that would be in shadow, to just give our face a little bit of dimension. pretty good. It's smearing a little bit. I, I like it. I'm okay with that. All right, so now to, um, we're going to go to the lips. I'm going to fill in that little space, that seam between the upper and lower lip. And if you look at yourself in the mirror, you have a little bump here, right? And it goes up in that way. Try to curve the edges of your lip up just a little bit so that your girl doesn't look like she's frowning. These lines don't need to meet, so I would just leave them. And then I would start here, away from the eye. And if you're doing this in pen or pencil on your page and you're going to add paint to it later, definitely don't worry about any lines that are off. Don't leave your girl um, with just a floating head on a page, though. Give her a neck. There we go. And then we're going to come up here, and I want to at least be here, but I probably want to even be a little higher than that, because if you think of her head, if you look at your head, it's round, right? then her head's going to at least come up there. So you don't want to start the top of her head down here, then she's going to look like she's got something wrong with her head. Right. I generally do something scribbly with the hair. It's kind of my thing. If you've been watching me for a while, you know that. You can get as detailed as you want to be. Add color if you want. We're just doing this in this black pen so that you all can see. And we're doing this in real time too. I'm not speeding it up or anything. Now don't forget to give her some eyebrows. That's probably a little too far into the bridge of her nose there, but that's okay. Right? Okay, so let's get in here with our paintbrush. And move some of the pigment from that ink around. The nice thing about using a pen like this, something that's water soluble, is if you do make a mistake, 
you don't have to worry so much about covering it up. You can just kind of move the pigment around and uh, make it work with your drawing and make it look like it's intentional. And I'm pulling some of the pigment into some of the areas of her face, which would be in shadow, to give her some dimension. I should tell you, I'm sitting down doing this, and um, the book is flat, so to get a really good perspective on what you're doing, I probably should have her tilted, but uh, we're on camera doing this, doing this for YouTube, so um, yeah. <laughs> Hopefully she's going to be good. Okay, we're going to let her just dry a little bit. And I'm going to come over here with the other stencil, which is this one. And you can flip these, this one either way. I think that I want to put her... put her this way. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to hold it down. Now you can, of course, I said already, you can paint with these. They're, these are stencils. You can paint, you can spray ink, and then fill your details in. So you want to do something similar. You want to make sure that where you start her chin on the profile is a little harder. Um, so cut out a picture from a magazine or um, look at yourself in the mirror. Take a picture of yourself sideways, something like that. Again, though, you don't want to, you want the space to the top of her head to be, you know, about this much. So up here, her head, the top of her head would be up here. Somewhere around here would be an ear, which you don't have to draw in, and honestly, I don't usually draw it in, and I... When I do draw it in, I don't, don't usually like the way it looks, so that may stay or it may go. I don't know. We'll have to see. Okay. Again, we're going to take our brush. And the thing I like about water-soluble ink or even like charcoal is you can do a lot with fixing a drawing, suggesting shapes without actually drawing them by just moving the pigments around. They're very forgiving. And I love that. So while we're doing this one, this one's drying a little bit. You could do this with a bigger brush. I like the control, though, of having the smaller one. Now the upper lip is usually darker than the lower lip, so that's a good place to add extra pigment. I also want to put the suggestion of an eyebrow.
Okay, I need to. I need to check it. Let's see. She's still a little bit flat-headed over here. This one's good. This one's a little bit flat-headed, so. Okay, now I'm going to grab a white paint pen. It's kind of dirty white, but it is white. It's kind of it's kind of goofed up, but it is white. Let's see. And kind of bolder black pen. This is a feud ball pen. Um, the first thing we want to do. I also have a few oil pastels out there just off camera. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my white paint pen. As soon as I get it to work, I need a scratch piece of paper. That didn't really show up very well, so let's actually move on to something else and let that dry for a minute. This is a another different black pen. It's got a little bit wider nib. I'm going to go over the lines that I like and want to keep, and I'm going to emphasize them, darken them. I'm going to keep it loose and sketchy. If you've decided you don't like the change of your the shape of your face, you can change it a little bit. I'm going to add back some marks into the hair that we kind of lost from um, blending out the pigment. As you can keep, see, I'm even keeping that uh, loose and sketchy because that's that's my thing. Okay. Take a white oil pastel, maybe. Now the white oil pastel is not opaque. It's a bit, this one is a children's student grade one. So it's a bit transparent, so it's pushing some of the marks are tint into the background, but it's not covering them up completely. I don't really want it to. I'm going to take a gray one. And I'm going to use that to help me with some of the shadows. While that oil pastel is fresh, I can uh, blend it out with my finger.
and if I get it wrong or I get too much or make her look like she's got whiskers, I can, you know, fix it a little bit by adding some white and lightening. Right? Now if you want to add a little bit of color for a pop, um, let's see, we can go with maybe for the eyes. Um. And again, I think that green's a little dark, so I can go back in here with some white and lighten the tint a little bit by just blending it on the page. And that's better. So you want to work pretty quickly. I don't want the oil pastel to dry too much. It, yes, is like a crayon, but it also will dry and then it's more difficult to move. And the Delusions Journal doesn't really like being rubbed on, so, so there's that. <laughs> it t tends to pill. It's doing that right now. I got it wet, plus I'm rubbing on it. It doesn't really like that too much. You could use gel gelatos. You could use um, gel crayons. Whatever you have, I like the dry mediums. They're fun to use, um, especially in a situation like this. I'm actually liking this green. I wasn't so sure when I first put it on there if, <laughs> if I just made a gigantic mistake <laughs> and that you guys out there in YouTube land are never going to see this page because it was horrible, but now I'm liking it, so it's good. So we're all good. And y'all may not agree with me, <laughs> but you know, that's okay. I like it, so that's an important thing. And these, by the way, are just, this one is a Prima oil pastel, and this one is a Color Peps, so these are not expensive brands by any stretch of the imagination. Man, I really like that page. Who knew? I don't really think I want to add anything too much else. Maybe a little bit here. I had to stand up. 
So you can always tell when I'm doing something like this for you all and filming it and I stop talking. <laughs> That's because I'm really into what I'm doing. Whether it turns out good or not, I'm having fun and enjoying the process. And honestly, as my friend Cindy Utter says, that's what life's all about. I think that's pretty good. Let's see. I could keep going. You know, I'm not always a huge green fan. So this is kind of surprising me. I've just used blue and green and then the shades of black from the pen and then some white. That's all I've done. I like that. All right, let's see if we can put a quote on there. Um, I'm looking in my quote box. because it's just completely full and I'm just going to grab a load of things that are on top and ooh, that works I think that one works some of these you all sent me yep there we go we found two things they're going to work well together I am going to use some matte medium. I have some matte medium that's almost empty. So I'm going to take this part of this one. We're going to cut this one apart, trim it a little bit. Okay. And we will get some uh, matte medium, which is like just about past it. And I'm going to put them here. Now the matte medium may reactivate some of the ink, but it won't do anything to the oil pastel. I need to cut off this one word here because it won't make sense. There we go. Just then, all at once, a true, oops, original. Okay, and then I'm going to take, um, here it is, my frosting scraper. Oops. I'm going to spread out that excess matte medium, push the words down, and there you go. Just then, all at once, a true original. So there you go, my bare bones face stencil. I hope it just at least gives you all a starting point of what you can do to create faces for your journals. Simple, quick, easy, um, and yet unique and truly you. Uh, if you want to buy them, the link is in the Etsy, sh um, is in the description to my Etsy shop. And, um, that's it for today. Don't forget to check out that description. Have a great day. And most importantly, do something nice for yourself because you deserve it. And I'll see you later. Bye guys.